Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how to write business rules for validation and calculated fields in Visual Studio LightSwitch. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric, rich Internet Silverlight applications. This lesson picks up where we left off in the last video. We have a simple order management system with products, customers, their orders, and details. We can search and uh, edit customers and products, as well as enter orders for all of them in a couple different ways. So let's run the application real quick to show you where we are. So we've got our customers here, and when we click on a customer, we've got the customer edit screen that's displaying the order headers below. Now we can order, we can enter orders in a couple different ways here. One, we can um, click on the order headers here that brings up just the order details for this order. So you're editing one order at a time, or you'll notice there's a open orders. We can edit any of the unshipped orders um, all together for this customer on the screen. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add a few business rules. First, I don't want to allow an order date that's in the future. Okay, so that wouldn't make any sense. Um, I also want to make sure that the ship date cannot be before the order date. That obviously wouldn't make any sense either. We also want to prevent duplicate line items. Okay, so if we have the same product selected, we want to make sure that that doesn't, doesn't happen. So we want to make sure that the user specifies the right quantity okay, and price for each single product. Okay, and then I also want to display an, a line item total and an order total here on the screen so the user can see easily how much this is going to cost. Okay, some of these rules are declarative rules and some we have to specify um, at, in code. Now we're going to do that all inside the entity designer because what I want to do is I want to make sure that all my rules are in one place and that any screen in the system always pays attention to those rules. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up the Entity Designer for our order details. And we want to set the quantity uh, minimum value to 1. Okay, so this is a declarative rule. So that means we can just enter it right here on the property sheet. Just scroll down to validation and type the minimum value as 1. So declarative rules are uh, rules that you can specify without having to write code. All right, so now we're going to write... Um, a couple of computed properties. Okay, so what it, one for the order detail that calculates the line item total, and then we'll do one also for the order header that calculates the entire order total. So let's just go ahead and click computed property and do line item total. And the type is going to be money. Okay, so now we just need to uh, edit the method up here that returns the result for this computed property. It's going to be pretty easy. The result is going to equal me.quantity times me.price. Okay, cool. So now we need to also add a calculated field for the order header. So let's go over back over to our order headers entity designer. Okay, and we will click on computed property here. And this one will be called order total. And this will also be money. And we can go ahead and edit the method. And what we're going to do is we, all we need to do is just loop through all of the order details here and add up all of the line item totals. So dim total equals 0, 0.0 for each, oops, for each um, detail in uh, as I'll say in me actually, in me dot uh, order details. Okay, you just say total. plus equals um, detail dot line item total. Okay? And then we just return that as a result. Oops, results equals total. Okay, cool. Alright, we could have written a, a link query to also add up the to sum all of the line items as well. Just use uh, whatever code you're comfortable with. Okay, so now that we have our declarative rules and calculated fields set up, we need to write some validation code. The first is around the order date and ship date. So the order date cannot be in the future and must be less than the ship date. So let's go ahead and go back to our order header and select order date, and then we're going to write code, order date, validate. The first thing I need to do is check to make sure that the order date is not greater than today. 
Okay, so if me.orderDate is greater than date.today, then we're going to go ahead and add uh, an error message. Okay, so the way we do that is say results.addPropertyError. Now, notice there are a few things that you can access here. Um, add entity error will add an error state to the entire entity itself. The entity result allows you to specify a warning message or a, an informational message. The screen is still allowed to be saved by the user, um, but this allows you to just add informations and warnings. So if you add an error, that means that the user cannot save the form or the screen. Okay, so I'm going to add the property error, and it's just going to say order, oops, order date cannot be in the future. Okay, then we also need to check to make sure that the order date is not after the ship date. Okay, so if the ship me dot ship date, okay, it has a value. Remember, it's not a required field. And also, me dot order date is greater than me dot ship date, then we have a problem. Results dot add property error. Order date cannot be greater than ship date. Okay, so now we're also going to want to add that, that same validation rule here um, on the on the shipped date as well. So I just copied that into my clipboard and then I can just access the uh, the code for ship.validate right here while I'm in the editor. Okay, so I'm just going to reword this a little bit different. So it's going to be shipped date cannot be less than the order date. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and click save. Okay, so now we need to add a rule for duplicate line items. This rule that we're going to want to run on both the client and the server. So we first want immediate feedback if the user has entered a duplicate product. And then we also want to check on the middle tier against any data in the database, just in case another user entered data behind our backs. So this keeps the order valid at all times. So the cool thing about light switch property validation is that you just write code in one place and the runtime will make sure to call it first on the client and then again on the server. And in fact, that's what's going to happen with the order validate and the ship date too. It will run first on the client and then again on the server. So what we want to do for our duplicates is we want to place that business rule on the product property of our order details. So let's open up order details, go to product, and then we're going to go ahead and select product validate. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to need to look at the collection of order details. So we need to walk up the hierarchy a little bit. So we have me.orderHeader, okay, and an order header has order details right here. Okay, this gets us that collection. So if we're on the client, it will be what we see on the screen. If we're on the server, this collection will be the changes coming from the client merged with the server data. So this is a really nice feature of LightSwitch. It's handling all of the plumbing for us. All we need to do is write a business rule around our entities. Okay, so now how do we check for duplicates? So we have an unsorted collection here. We could loop through the collection and find duplicate products, but we would need to sort the collection first and create a, create a grouping variable, etc. So if we use link, language integrated query, we can write a query over this collection instead to find any duplicates and it's a lot easier this way. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'll show you how to do this. First, we need to make sure that the product is some, there's something in the product. The product is not nothing. So if me.product is not nothing. Okay, then we're going to check for duplicates. dim dupes equals we're going to write a query from from detail Okay, the details, we're going to look at the order details in me.orderheader.orderdetails. Okay, where, okay, the detail dot product is not nothing. Okay, so we're looking at just the line items that have products. Okay, and also where the detail dot product dot ID is equal to me.product.id. Okay, so it's this, it may be the same. Okay, and also the detail is not me. 
So I'm not, I'm eliminating myself from this check. So that will pull up any duplicates that uh, have the same, the two line items. If one has the same product, it will put, put that into this collection. Okay, so this really just returns an enumerable or a collection of order detail. So if there are any in this collection, then we have a problem. So if dupes.any, so if there are any in there, okay, determines if this sequence, so this collection contains any elements, okay, if it does, then we have a problem. Results dot add property error, and we just want to say, I want to put, actually, I want to put this me dot product dot product name in the description here of the error message. So, um, uh, cannot, it is a duplicate. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit F5 and run this, see what we've got, and check all of our business rules. Okay, so here are our customers. Let's go ahead and open one. And I'm going to open up all of our orders. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add those uh, computed properties onto the screen so we can see them. So the line item and the order totals. So let's go ahead to the order header details and we're just going to add the order total right there. And then we're also going to select the order detail. I'll add the line item total there at the end. Okay, cool. So let's save. Okay, so now we can see the, our line item totals here. Let's, uh, there's our line item on the side there. Okay, so Let's go ahead and start checking our rules. Okay, so first of all, today is the 10th, so I'm gonna let's say the 11th. You'll notice that this fails right away that the order date cannot be in the future, so that's cool. So let's go ahead and put that back. Um, the ship date, remember, cannot be before the order date, so you'll see that both of these rules are firing now. Ship date cannot be less than the order date, and the order date cannot be greater than the ship date. So um, let's go ahead and just clear that back out. You'll also notice that we get the summary at the top here. Okay, so we'll see that these are all of the rules that are firing on the screen. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, remove that to clear that out. Um, so the other thing we got to check now is the duplicate order details. So let's see. I'm going to add. Actually, let's do a couple things. Let's let's add a new quantity. First, we want to specify uh, the quantity cannot be, you remember, it cannot be less than one. So let's not do the quantity and see how that works. So let's just let's just select any product here. Okay, so you'll notice right away that we've got the value must be greater than one. And that's our declarative rule. We didn't actually write any code for that one. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and, and change that. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're gonna now let's go ahead and add another one that's an Oreos. Okay, so remember we can't have duplicates. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say Oreos. There's Oreos. Okay, and you'll notice right away we get a validation error. Okay, so you'll see that the that there is a duplicate product. Okay, we're adding duplicate products here. Okay, so and actually, if you can't even you, when you scroll off, put, um, close that screen. What's kind of cool is you can see the errors here. But if you go if you go up to the top, the summary, you'll notice that if I select it, the row is actually being selected in the grid. That's the problem. Okay, so that's kind of cool too. So I've got to remove one of these before it passes validation. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to simulate another user. Okay, so we're working on this one screen here. I'm going to simulate another user editing the same order and make sure that this same duplicate check actually fires on the client. So let's go ahead and, and save our order now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and open up. We have a different screen, so I've, I'm going to be working with the, the order that I changed right here. So let's refresh. Um, refresh this, and then we're going to go ahead and select this first one, and you'll see there's the Red Bull and Oreo. So this is in effect the same order, okay, that I'm working with here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, enter a new product in here. We can specify pretty much anything different here. Okay, let's say oranges. Okay, and save. Okay, so now I've got oranges in there, okay, in the database. So now if I come over here, we can add oranges.
Okay, and everything's going to pass just fine on the screen. Okay, it didn't check it couldn't could not check that on the screen. Okay, because this is working with the client side. However, when we save, you'll see that we did get the server to fire. Unable to save the data. Please correct the data. What happened? Oranges as a duplicate product. Okay, so how do we know that? Well, we can refresh the screen and see, whoops, we refresh the screen, we have to discard our changes, and we can see now that there is the oranges that came from the other, uh, the other save, the other um, user. Okay, so we are, we are running the rules on the client and the server. And so that's how you can create um, complex business rules, validation, and calculated fields in Visual Studio Lite Switch. Thanks for watching.